Too much Lady Gaga stuck in my head. Not enough right. stuck in your head. Anthony on Air Podcast back in for another episode. We have a new Brian Landry 911 call that was made this past Landry. Saturday. What did I say, Landry? You did. Katie Couric is describing a, a party at Jeffrey Epstein's house as an eyes wide shut party. Plus, she's got a lot of other things to talk about in her new memoir. Uh, the Urban Meyer uh, video from over the weekend making a lot of noise. Speaking of a lot of noise, Facebook and Instagram was down today. Even Twitter went down for a little while as what? a result. Uh, plus the Facebook whistleblower. By the way, if you've been involved in anything over the last year and a half, Trump, COVID, Black Lives Matter, whatever, you're going to want to listen to the Facebook whistleblower uh, segment. It's very, very interesting. Restless anal syndrome speaks for itself. We'll talk about it. What? Tony Bennett uh, retiring. Very, very sad stuff. Shatner going to space. I got some nice compliments over the weekend. Uh, all that and more on this special episode weekend of the uh, Anthony on Air podcast. Uh, brought to you by our good pals over at Jumpstart Coffee Company. More on them in a second. Let's start with the Brian Laundry call, Frankie C. Yes. Uh, a hiker on the Appalachian Trail. That would be up here in the Northeast. Correct. Told a 911 dispatcher that he was 99.99% sure that he spoke with Brian Laundry on Saturday. His name is Dennis Davis. He's 53. He spoke he with him. He told the Haywood County, North Carolina Sheriff's Office. I guess we should, I mean, I say Appalachian Northeast, but I, I guess it kind of expands all it the way. It comes down, yeah. Yeah. It comes down a few um, states below us. Uh, but there was some rumors people were talking about. Maybe he was up there. He'd frequented the camping grounds up in the Appalachians. It would make sense that he would go back there. I'm going to play you the audio of the call. You guys, you know, Frank, Frankie C is going to hear it for the first time. You may be hearing it for the first time. Let me know in the comments you, what you think the authenticity of this is, if it's legit or not. Yes. So, if, so if this is correct, Dog the Bounty Hunter is way off. If this is correct, Dog the Bounty Hunter, the FBI, everybody is way off. They're looking south of Florida, basically. They're in Florida looking at the southern islands and stuff. And he's somewhere in the Appalachian Mountains. I mean, literally, he can be. Think about how hard it is to find a person. Needle in a haystack. If they're off the grid, it's that's it's, that's it's almost impossible. It's almost impossible. Yeah. Especially when they've had like a 10-day head start. Yeah. Oh. Absolutely. The only thing is, how is he getting food and where is he sleeping? I mean, if he's in the middle of nowhere, fine. If he could camp and rough it, fine. Food is a big problem. Food and water. I 100 percent agree. But like if you're an outdoorsman and you know how to fend for yourself, you could live off of protein bars, beef jerky. I mean, you got to buy those it. bars. And you got to buy that beef jerky. He, but he, he had that 10 day head start, so he could he could have procured all of those things. Yeah. already he could have a he could have a three-month food supply maybe maybe but he could you know yeah, i mean true. he could have been set up before he left you know could have been set up with a whole bunch of stuff before he left absolutely i'm no expert in this but i saw city slickers more than once and they lived off of jerky for two weeks while they were hustling cattle across the that's West. true that's true and that's not just a movie no no i'm pretty sure that was based on real life um, but if you or I were to do this, we would be in 48 hours. We'd be like, I give up. I'm, we would be, I would be spotted at uh fucking Sonic. You know, people would be like, I was at a drive through and I saw that fat fuck, uh, who was on the run from the cops. That would be how you found me. Yeah. Me. I, I've always, you know, ever since you, like you see movies like cast away and stuff like that, you kind of put yourself you ever like imagine yourself in that situation what you would do and how yes you would... I, I, I would I end it all you'd end it all you'd be done we talked about this with your frank has a 46 page dissertation full-on powerpoint presentation on what he would do if the zombie apocalypse were to hit I mine don't. is a line and a half i would prick my finger and walk out my front door you have a like family this. Come find you me, would, everybody. You're not going to take care of your family. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You're going to make me have to do it. There, you, It's you, every every person. It was zombie apocalypse comes. It's every man for themselves. 
You wouldn't yeah. go out and bust some heads first? I'm not waiting. I don't have the Will I don't have the Will Smith slash Tom Cruise gene. I'm not lasting. I, if anything, you I'll go a good two and a half years and then eventually wind up dying. Why even put myself through it all? If I can't go out and have cocktails and a fine dinner, there's no point in any of this. There's you just could. No you can make yourself cocktails. There's still stuff going on. You can still get in all these zombie movies. They run into like an abandoned bar and you'll see them drinking whatever the hell. Make my own cocktails in the band. That's not what I'm talking about. I need oh, I need live waiter. in the Hamptons, my friend. I need to be taken care of and dined. You know what I'm saying? You could be the guy that brings it all back. You could be the, the savior. I'm not that. that. No, I'm not that guy. You could be there when it happens, though, when it comes I, all, I, all comes back. No, I'm the guy that dies an hour and 20 into the film where you're like, oh, I thought he was going to make it. Oh, well. And it's like, yeah. You barely get a credit. Barely get a credit. I'm the black guy in the horror movie. I'm going to stick yeah. around long enough to be like, is he really going to make? Oh, no, no. This no, is, no. I forgot. It's Hollywood. Right. He's going to. Yeah. <sighs> Basically. Basically, that's me. I'm not. I, see, I'm the opposite. I don't give up. I would. I would be out there. I'd be dressed in black like a ninja. You know, with like a machete, trying to you know get yeah. my, make my way through the zombies, trying to sneak around. All right, then I, what, Mister Smarty Pants? Mister, I don't. Ha I chose to not have kids. You make it through. It's you and a bunch of other people, and they turn around and go, "All right, time to restart society again." Now you're gonna what? You're gonna have four hundred kids? So it's not just gonna be me and like four people. It's gonna be you, be you gather people together. You get you put up signs. You welcome people. But so that's you're going to be thing. expected to have 20 to 40 kids. No, you're not. Yes. Why? Because you got to restart society. It's not just going to be me. There's other people. Yeah, but you're still going to have to, even if there's 500 people, you're still going to have to have a bunch of kids. Yeah, if every if every family has four kids, that's that's already oh, four kids. Listen to this guy. That's yeah, already okay. 2,000. Then you, you keep multiplying and, you, and you, you build them up. Four kids. You see, you you just you just ready to throw in a towel. You don't even think it out. I, let me tell you something. That's even not even it, my plan. You're even if even it was four four kids, that's two kids too many for me. I, I'm not doing it. I will not. I can't yeah, participate. You don't even have that. to. You don't have to pay for school. They're just there. Yeah, but you yeah, teach them what you there. want. They'll be like, Dad, Dad. What do you think? Go of play this? with your brothers and sisters and the neighbors. <laughs> All right, here's a Brian La Laundry call. Tell me what you think about it. Uh, this is cut up, and. Uh, this is the guy. Okay, so what I was going to say was the guy gave his name. Like, I don't think this guy is a crazy because he's standing by it. He get, It doesn't make... All right, I'm not going to give my opinion. Yeah, let's, let's hear it first. Listen listen to it, and then we'll talk about it. Hey, we're County 911. What's the location of your emergency? I'm on the highway right now, but um, I, I ran into Brian Lauer just a little while ago. Okay, where did you see him at? Um, I was I was at the parking lot for the Appalachian Trail. He was driving a truck, and I stopped and spoke, talked to him. It was a white truck. I think it was a Ford F-150. I'm not 100% sure of that. And it was kind of a, a newer model. It wasn't like an old beater. It was a, a newer truck. What is it about a white Ford that just has run run away on it? Mur a murderous <laughs> escape. Ford route. Ford has to like <laughs> rebrand themselves. Yeah, yeah, they got to do something. Ford's gonna run a commercial preferred by murderers escaping ever <laughs> everywhere. Yikes. It's 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 that's that's just coast a to coast bizarre coincidence. I was making a U turn, and Listen in the road, this. and he came up behind me, and he slowed down and kind of flashed his lights, like telling me, "Oh, go ahead and go, and I'm going to wait for you." And as I turned around, and I'm coming back by him, he's waving his arm out of out of his truck, like for me to slow down. And I pull up next to him. I'm, he was he was talking wild. He, told, he said that his girlfriend loved him and he had to go out to California to see her. And he was asking me how to get to California. And I said, well, you can get on I-40 right there and drive west and you'll get there. And he said, no, I think I can go this way and kind of left. But he was acting funny. And I wasn't sure about what he looked like. And then I got, I went and parked 
and pull, pulled up the photographs of him, and I'm 99.99% sure that was him. Okay, a couple things. Mm-hmm. First, he calls him Brian Lowry. That's true. He didn't say Brian Laundry. That's number one. Mike number Lowry. Two, Mike Lowry. Fucking love Martin. We don't praise Martin enough, Martin uh, Lawrence enough on this. Uh, you ever see Blue Streak? Uh, like a while ago. Love that movie. I don't really remember it. That's such a good movie. Anyway, yeah. he calls him Matt. He calls him Brian Lowry. Brian Lowry, even though he pulled up the pictures of him. Yeah. Number two, um, how did Brian Laundry get a brand new F one fifty? Unless he stole it. Great question. Or bought it. How do you buy? You just buy a car. Can you buy a car for cash and not leave a name behind? I think they have to run like. I mean, if you buy it all in one shot, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I feel like F- I feel like the FBI him? would check the parents, you know, bank could, accounts. Hey, where did this uh, thirty-five be, grand come from? Uh, maybe his over. cousin bought it a, a a month ago, a year ago, and he just was like, "I need this." I feel like the FBI and whoever. This is gonna, good. Throw this out there. I want to see if we can debunk well, this or go ahead. Yeah. I feel is, like the FBI is going to have. Records of Brian Laundry's entire family and what cars they have. And like, is your car missing now? I mean, let's check all these. Everybody he could have contacted. Check if they're missing a car. Can you prove a missing car, though? Because if you're like, where? where yeah, show me this car. Where's three the car? months ago, you had this car. Now you don't have it. Where is it? And you go, I, I sold it. You got to prove that. No, I guess if it's a Ford F1 white 50. OJ edition. It's we'll brand know. new. Yeah. Why'd you sell it? Where'd you buy it from? You know, you, you could you catch these people in these kinds of things. Okay, good point. If we if that comes out in the next couple of days, then we know that this is legit. Right. Go ahead. Um. Okay. So calls him Brian Lowry. Uh, he didn't Lowry. really know. He said Lauer. He didn't say Lowry. Oh, Lauer. I'm sorry, Lauer. Yeah. Um, the dis the 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 woman on the phone should have asked who i mean why did she assume he knew she knew who we meant yeah that was kind of that was a, a quick unless it was edited dance. it could have been she could have asked i'll be honest with you yes it, I'll, I'll tell you this was edited i listened to supposedly the unedited version and there she doesn't correct him in the unedited version either so i don't know if the unedited version that was released publicly yeah. was edit was indeed still edited because if someone goes, I saw Brian Lauer, I'd he be would like, say, you what mean the hell laundry. are you talking about? Right. Or, yeah, great for you, good for you. Right. You know, like, that's not a person we're looking for. I agree with that. Uh, it's a little weird. But I, I will say the, the phone call, like you got a, what I just played for you was a, it was all the meat, but it was a concise version. Sure. Like there are times he goes through a tunnel and they lose him. For, it, it's like seven minutes longer. Of blah, so you got the edited version. What's also weird is him saying that some story. Why would he talk about his girlfriend's out in California? I mean, can I tell you the weirdest part for me? God. The fact that Brian flags him down. Right. That to me is the absolute. This isn't Brian laundry because there's no if he happens to see him, if you're caught in it, like, oh, this guy saw me. And makes up this story. I'm a, I'm a more inclined to think, oh, maybe this is him. But the fact that Brian flags him down so he can ask him, well, that seems not terrible because, well, not totally unbelievable because if Laundry's staying off the grid, he can't pull up a map. He can't do all he that. So he's got to ask for directions. That does make sense. Or get a map. Which that does make. Where the sense. hell is he going to get a map? Um, I still don't think he does, though, because I think that if he is an outdoorsman, he can figure out which way is west. And yeah. although he is a young kid, a lot of young people are really stupid, like really, really stupid. Right. And the Appalachian Trail to California. I mean, yeah, you start heading west, but at a certain point. You know, you want to I'm sure he's got to save money for gas and he wants to find the quickest route. If he's going to California, why would he go to California? I mean, I don't know. They're going to be looking for him there, too. Gas is a great point. How do you get gas? 
cash, but you still you wear a mat. Maybe he's got, you know, COVID mask could cover you up a little bit. You grow your hair out. He's probably not looking exactly the same. I'm sure. Probably not. Um, sure, he's dressing different. I mean, we all when you think of Brian Laundry, you think of white t-shirt, shorts, shaved head, a little scruff. I'm sure he's either grow, grown it out, grown it out, wearing some other new stuff or whatever, wearing sunglasses. A face mask. Sunglasses. Even still, you're walking in and out of gas stations, which all have cameras. You're really taking That's true. a risk. Yep. You're really taking a risk there. I mean, you have to really kind of guess about the pump, and and with that, you would have to have some sort of a. He could be. He could be hard. He could be doing, you know, zombie style. You drive until the car runs out of gas, and then you steal the next one. Just keep stealing cars until you until you make it. I guess so, because you would think that that would pop up on police radar, but I guess there are so many cars that are stolen now that you probably wouldn't or even notice it. You just keep siphoning out of people's gas tanks. Yeah, fill up a can. Again, just, risky, but yes. To avoid cameras. See, this is why I would, to avoid I would give up. In, I would every time I would think of something, I'd be like, "Yeah, but I might get caught doing." It. I would just—it's too much. I'd just give up. You can't. Well, you can't. First of all, you give up because you give up. You know, if this is. This guy needs to come in. But second of all, the constant running. This guy, you know, it's just constant. Not only the guilt. Of course, there's the guilt. Any normal person would be guilty, you know, in conscious. Um, but also just the constant. You're always on the run. People, you can never That's stress. live your life again. You, yeah. you're, you're done. Yeah. Are you like, you're not? You, you might be on the road, but you're not free to do anything. Aren't you, I feel horrible saying this, but aren't you better off just lying about how? Here's what I think in my mind. I obviously think he killed her. I'm not saying he's a good person, but I, I can't help but think that, like, even him running to me shows regret and remorse. Not remorse, but regret. I think it shows fear. Okay, it could be, but I, I think that, I don't think he just killed her to kill her. I think there was an argument or something got heated. I don't think he meant to. Who knows? Maybe he hit her really hard and she went down and he just felt like, you know, oh, sh like I'm in, like one of those, I'm in trouble. I got to, uh, I have to. Yeah, but a normal person, you do something happens like that, you call you call nine one one. You say well, that's what, what I'm happened. saying. Like, uh, like at the you know, like maybe his flight, uh, fright, flight response was different. But you're you're almost better off just lying about how you did it and claiming self defense or temporary insanity. Like, aren't your odds better that way than what this guy has chosen to do? Probably. I mean, he's gonna get caught if he stays in the country. He's gonna get caught. He he's can't. He can't but, stay on the run forever unless he's in the middle of nowhere. Maybe again, it's me. What are you that, doing? Maybe it's me that I just had a busy weekend. I feel like the buzz on this has died down a bit. Well, only because there's just no new leads. There's no like yeah. there was. There's the story. He fled. Dog the bounty hunter jumps in. He has a little video, and then we haven't heard anything new. So yeah. this is the newest thing: the the nine one one call, which thin, but it's something. Yeah, I I think every part of this is 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 a promising lead, except for the fact that he flags the guy down. I I just think that 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 doesn't. It is really a misstep. It. And I mean, like he could, this could have just been any cycle, as we've seen with the guy on TikTok that made that funny TikTok about he's got to fly to Pittsburgh for his cousin's wedding. How do you not get you know? Yeah, it could have been a guy that just looked like him. Yeah, could have been. Could have been a crazy on the roads. As Lord knows, there's plenty of them. Or it could have very well been. Could have been him. Guy. Who knows? I mean, again, again, ninety nine percent sure. Th that's the thing. If this is just some crazy, you know, who's just being crazy, that's one thing. But this is somebody who called nine one one, gave his information. Since this call has been released, has had no problem putting his face out on out there with things, and you yeah. know, I mean, I just don't think a person would go again. Call me naive. I don't think a person would go to those lengths if they didn't 100 percent believe that they legit saw the person devil's advocate. The other side of it could be the guy is looking for some sort of attention attention. Right. And he's just like, all right, it's not him. What did I what did I do? I said, it, I, thought, I thought it was him. Sorry. But now his face is out there and 
It's a tough thing though because you're you're really you're you're pulling resources off of. Oh, it's a dick move. If yeah. it's not legit, it's a dick move. But if he's some weirdo, desperate guy who's looking for attention, he's got it. And the worst he could, you know, come at him and go, "Up, oh, sorry, thought it was him." I mean, you know, I he, think about all he could, has to say. I think about me again. I, Lord knows, the attention would be great. Like I wish I would fucking stumble across this guy. Are you kidding me? You know what that would do for our podcast? It'd be fantastic. That would be Curious. amazing. But I can't, like, I would literally have to be that fuck. I would have to have zero doubt in my mind. Because I, I would I would call that in, but to associate myself with that, like, I would, I would have no problem calling and being like, hey, I think, I don't know. I, you know, it looked really, I would feel, I, it would have to be a situation where I would feel bad not calling it in. But I wouldn't want it to be public. There's a difference between. What I would have done. I feel yeah. bad if I if if I didn't call this in and it was him, and I know for a, 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 that was him. Like there is a difference there. One thing, like if I was that guy, when like when does he think it's him? Does he think it's him as he's talking to him, or does it hit him a few minutes later? Like oh, that could have been Brian. Well, Lundgren. he said he said he pulled away crazily, and then he pulled over and looked at the pictures. So he had the idea that it could have been him enough to pull up, pull up pictures. I would have followed him. I would have been like, I'm following him right now. I'm right You're behind right. his car. You're if right. I don't have anybody else in the car, if like my wife's not in the car, maybe. If I don't have, if I don't have you know, people I got to worry about. Yeah, why not? And I can drive him? crazy. You know, maybe just keep your distance. I'm right, I'm right behind him. Or try to track him down or go back and. and I'm sure the guy was long gone by then, but try. I don't know. Yeah. And this probably he probably didn't hit him maybe till a couple minutes later. He was already gone. But yeah, try. I, I know. I know you're, you're following a potential murderer. But well, maybe that, maybe. But that's when he makes the call. You know, too. Like, yeah. hey, I don't know how to follow him. Like here it is. Like you let yeah. them go and. Yeah. No, it's dangerous. Obviously, I don't condone following anybody. You know, it's potentially very dangerous, I'm sure. Um, but it's tough because it could have been him. You don't know. But, yeah, I, I'm sure. So hindsight, maybe following him is not the best idea. Yeah, what are you trying to do to people, Frank? Why no, do don't you? follow people. That's that's not a, not a good idea. Like, follow, be, if you call me up and like, I think it's Brian Law, I'd be like, follow him. Follow him. You do the, the, the Kramer following the guy with the golf clubs thing? Yeah. <laughs> Who was it? Danny Tartable? What was that? Uh, no, George? no, that was a different thing. But the, no, he follows Brad Garrett. Brad Garrett's take uh, steals right. Jerry's car with the, the car. With JFK's golf clubs in the back. Yeah. But there was also the Danny Tartable where he thought the guy gave him the finger and he just had a cast. <laughs> yeah. He's like, is that Danny Tartable? Yeah, of the New York Yankees. <laughs> It's a great baseball. I'd like to shake his hand, but I can't. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. All right. uh, Last couple tidbits on Brian Laundry after we do our live read for Jumpstart Coffee Company. Had some more Jumpstart over the weekend. It was so good. It is very good. I smell it. Every time we do this, it's just the the smell just fills up the air and it's it's just magical. It's fresh and It's a wonderful smell. It really, it really, you know what it is? It really is. Um, I'm telling you, you are missing out on uh, Jumpstart Coffee Company mm. if you haven't had any. Uh, no BS. Look at that. It's good it's stuff. Just, it's gl- Did anybody else see it glowing on their screen? Because I see it's, it glowing. It's magic crystals. <laughs> it's not instant. It's, it's regular coffee. It's phenomenal coffee. It's the uh, greatest coffee that I have ever had. No BS. And it's not just because... Fifty percent of the company's profits go to the Navy SEAL Foundation. Mm-hmm. Not, that's not the only reason why. It's because it is legit the best coffee that I have ever had. Uh, click the banner on the homepage of AnthonyOnAir.com or get the link in the description of this episode, and you can save fifteen percent off on this wonderful coffee. They have all sorts of great flavors uh, and roasts. Medium roast, dark roast, espresso blend, the decaf blend, and the light roast. $12 for a bag, 
not half bad. I mean, you can That's find good. cheaper. You can find cheaper uh, bags of coffee. Yeah, but, but you're uh, going to taste the, that difference. Yeah, and half the what you spend on it is going to uh, the Navy Seal Foundation. Exactly. So, right, so there's you, the, there's the difference. Is a huge difference. That cheaper brand is not helping the Navy Seals. In fact, I would go as far to say is I believe they're funding terrorism. I can't confirm any of that, but All it's, right. you can't tell me it's not possible. This is where you get in trouble. This is where right. people don't know you're joking. Right. And and they call you an idiot. And uh, how could you? <laughs> and I got I got to come to your defense. Are you telling me that you can you're creating you, more work for me? Let me ask you a question. Ugh. You can 100 percent sit there and say that Folgers isn't funding terrorism. I, yeah, I, I guess so. I could probably do that. <laughs> you would bet your life on it? Would you no. bet your wife's life? No. Case closed. Case closed. You heard it from Frank. Possibly cheaper coffee brands are funding terrorism, whereas Jumpstart Coffee Company is funding heroism. See what I did there? 15% yeah, off. Yeah, I saw what you did. Use the promo code <laughs> AOA15. I think we all saw what you did. <laughs> Just kidding, Folgers. I know you're not. Uh, don't sue me. Um, <laughs> white coffee. I don't think they're going to sue folders. Eh, feels like they might have a lot of lawyers. So just kidding. Um, great coffee, great cause 15% off. Use the uh, link in the description of this episode. I let me use this opportunity to shout out our phenomenal moderators on YouTube who always post the link during this portion of the show. I Ooh. love the moderators. They yes, you guys are awesome. Job. They are the jumpstart coffee of mod of YouTube moderators. If I can be so bold. So they're not funding terrorism. Not at all. They're funding love and, and Americaism. Nice. Uh, America Industries. It sounded good in my head before I said it. Yep. Uh, America Industries. Uh, Jumpstart Coffee Company. Link in the description. Uh, banner on the homepage of AnthonyNetter.com. Promo code AOA15. Thank you so much to Chris and the whole crew over at Jumpstart Coffee Company. You guys are the bestest um yep. dog the bounty hunter turned over some evidence uh from brian laundry to the authorities he said he hoped it can be examined for dna um i you know think when he, he comes in they just go thanks dog we'll get right on it i think i think they meet dog with the same enthusiasm as the beatles met ringo with when he wrote a song yeah right thanks buddy thanks pal. I got, got it thank, thank you no, I think they, I mean, I, I think it's the, they don't, you know, it's funny. They don't say in all the articles, but we know he pulled that energy drink. So I'm assuming that that's what it is. Maybe he found something else. Uh, I, I'd not, love to know, like he found an energy drink. How does he know it's Brian Laundries, or, it, or that it could be Brian? How is it not just an energy drink can that he found on the side yeah. of the road? Because supposedly now dog has moved to the Appalachian trail to be totally fair, Dog talked about the Appalachian Trail prior to going down to the island in Florida that we talked about on the last episode. Did he? He did. He he talked about the Appalachian Trail being a strong possibility. He said that people had called and gave him tips that they saw him in that in the Appalachian area. So it's a big area. It's a huge area. And again, with the amount of it's it's a bald white guy with crooked weird ears like there's a lot of that's, them. That's a lot of them. Yeah, I don't, I'm close to that, but that's not. I, I don't feel like people them. are making this up for the most part. I feel like people think that they're really seeing this guy or they feel bad not being like, I don't know if it was the guy, but this is what I saw. Just so you know. Right. I think we're getting a lot of that. The Appalachian Trail. I'm looking on the maps here and it's Huge. it's north of us. It's north no. of, of New York City. The Appalachian Mountains. Yeah, the mountains is one thing. It's like the entire coast. It is legit. Well, as I look, if it's a walking trail. Well, yeah, yes, but but that the Appalachian, the, any trail on the Appalachian Mountain would be. I the mean, the, but I'm that looking. trail goes all the way down with the mountain. Anyway, yeah, we learned Look. that in like second grade. Yeah, I forgot it in third grade. <laughs> Tell me about it. Uh, and the final thing on Brian Laundry tonight is that um, somebody uh, somebody bought uh, I, 
I feel weird about this because I feel like the parents are totally in on it. Okay. Um, but the um like the not the harassment, but it just feels misplaced. A justice for Gabby Banner was flown over Brian Laundry's parents' house. Okay. Um a single engine plane flew the banner over the Florida fugitive parents' house today with a simple message, justice for Gabby. They put it on TikTok. It, of course, uh, went viral and uh, went everywhere. Um, it's asking for donations. I, I just don't know about some of these things. Again, I feel like a lot of people are probably have the best intentions, but, you I know. I hope so, because a lot of... A lot of shady stuff can come out of this, and it's sad. Yeah, because I, I, I'm not describing this right. So the banner said "Justice for Gabby." TikTok times up, but the TikTok was spelled like TikTok, oh, like the, the TikTok. social media platform. So it's kind of like, I, like, are you are you well intentioned saying that TikTok people are going to find it, or are you just? Well, what is that doing? It? Is that promoting some kind of TikTok page or something? It didn't promote a specific page. You know, but I I just think that could be someone who doesn't know how to spell TikTok properly. <laughs> but it worked, meaning that the for the for the first person that put it, I mean, I'm sure probably a lot of people went up putting it up, but the first person that put it up has to know that that's going to go viral on TikTok. Mm -hmm. So their TikTok is going to explode. Yeah, you know. Um. So I I don't know. Again, I don't love. You know. Again, I I feel about this the same way I felt about Dog on day one. Like, are you doing like? If you're really doing this to help, why are you plugging the show so hard? The fact that the show moved over to Pluto TV, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you don't have to say that. But yeah. I guess you kind of do to keep it all rolling because, you know, fans wouldn't be, you know, it's it's going to help. You draw attention to something, it's going to help. But somebody like Dog, who's got clout, that can help. Some TikToker, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, that's whatever not to say that the people of Whatever TikTok, helps. Right, whatever helps. The people of TikTok have been doing some. Some pretty decent work. Let's oh, bring man. this son of a bitch in. God, I would love it. It's going to be a fun. It's going to be a not a fun. It's going to be a fun day. It's going to be like a like a big day if they catch this son of a bitch. Oh, absolutely. I can't. I hope they get him alive. And I hope. The story comes out, you know, how what happened just for the family's sake, at least the, so yeah. they know, you know, what happened to our dog. They, I mean, they have her, which is great. Not like, great, but it's at least closure. Something you know, it's good that they they actually recovered her. Is what I mean. Um, uh, even though you know, not not the way they wanted to, and but you know, just to get this guy in and just have some closure on this whole thing for them would yeah. be great. Dog also says that the longer that this goes on, the more dangerous it becomes. Um, which is kind of one of the yeah, it's one of those things where you're like. Does that really make sense? But when you think about it, it does because, especially him, he's got experience in this area where, the longer they the longer they stay on the run, the more desperate they become. Oh, the the, the more dangerous that he'll be once they uh, actually finally catch up to him. That makes sense. Or yeah. hopefully, he'll be a little weaker. Um, it's weird to say because I, like like a week ago, I was like, "Oh, this guy's dead for sure." But now I kind of feel like if, you know, if they never found him in that Florida uh, uh, reserve. Yeah, it just means he wasn't there. I mean, he, if, if he's in the Appalachian Trail, they just weren't looking in the right spot. And plus, if he's in a truck, and it's not, it's not like he's living, you know, in a, in a tent. He's not Rambo. You know, this guy, he's what, 22 years old? He's not a, a, a Navy SEAL. He's not, you know, he's a the kid for all intents and purposes. Yeah. Maybe he went camping a bunch of times, but doesn't mean you can live out there for a very long time. You know, it's not like this guy isn't, uh, you know, what the hell? Mr. Mr. I got nothing. Nature guy. Wilson, uh, Tom Hanks in, in, uh, maybe not a survivalist. Rambo was right. a good thing. I like Rambo. Like when he did the Rambo not thing. Rambo. You know, Rambo could do it. He could stay out there forever if he needed to. I'm just saying, I, if he was in the Florida Reserve, I, I feel like you... I don't think you drive far to kill yourself, is what I'm saying. Right, no, he's he's on the run. He's not looking to... Yeah. I don't think. Who the hell knows what he's thinking. But I think if they were going to find him dead, they were going to find him dead close by in one of those Florida areas. 
Not to say that they still won't. It's still a possibility. But I yeah. think if he's if he is in the Appalachian Trail somewhere, he's and looking at homeboys him. running. He's on the run. Absolutely. Which is possible then, which goes back to that video that we saw in Alabama, you know, where he was walking by the. the... That, I think, was debunked. They found the guy who that was. Oh, they found who that the was? Trail, the trail cam? You're right. I think they did. They, I, they, they, they figured out who that was, wasn't it? I was going to say something like that would make sense, because even if he was squig swagging his way, you know, yep. his way up there, you know, you never really know. All right, let's talk about Katie Couric. I think this is going to blow up, Frank. You see, I could be wrong about this. I was wrong about the Gabby Petito thing when I passed up on that story the first time. We had the opportunity to bring it to the podcast. I've um, been wrong about a bunch of things. I've been wrong about a lot. I've definitely been wrong. But um, I don't know. This has a weird feel to it. And again, I am always skeptical when there's a book involved. Clearly, there's a lot of books, uh, sales to be uh, done here. Sure is. Um, but there's something about this Katie Couric memoir uh that a lot of people are sort of buzzing about what is in here the little the, the few things that we've heard of so far are pretty big including the fact that she went to an epstein party which is shocking and described it as an eyes wide shut party Jeez, eyes wide shut was a movie with um nicole tom kidman cruise. and tom cruise nicole kidman. it was one of the three or four they made together when they were married something like that Days of Thunder was pre-marriage, but they still made that one together. The Far and Away, about the Irish immigrants. I fucking love that movie. Such a great movie. And this one. And this one. Was there any other ones? I feel like there's probably... Not that I can think of. I okay. don't know. Um, Could be. Let us know in the comments. Eyes Wide Shut fucked me up. Did it? Still does to this day. I don't Weird entirely... Shit, man. I don't entirely get it. Um... I, I don't think that that kind of thing is real, yet that kind of proves that it, 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 could, pos it could be possible. That movie, I never, I never actually saw beginning to end. Every time I, it's on, it's, a piece it's in the middle somewhere. I agree. I agree. And the closest I ever came to attending an Eyes Wide Shut party was one of the 14 I was invited to by JSAPs. So I can't, <laughs> again. Oops. Don't have a lot of experience in this area, but I'm happy we have Jay Sabs who can lend an opinion to this. Right. Well, thankfully. Um, Jay Sabs, you see Eyes Wide Shut? Of course I did. I mean, obviously. Is that like. Yes. And it's a weird, weird. Were you weird executive movie. producer? <laughs> I was like, no, actually, it goes like this and that. And right. here's the other thing I've never seen that movie at two o'clock in the afternoon, it is always at 11 p.m. or later. Yeah. So what's the what's the basic? I mean, it's just a mask on orgy, right? Is that the that's the yeah, gist? But I think that I'm really happy that we're talking about this because we really don't know anything about it. I think that it's like a club, like it's a traveling club that he's trying to get into. Yeah, right. it's okay. weird. And, and it they, like but a... they have they have <clears throat> mask orgies basically. Right. Is it like in the movie? I don't know. I'm sure this one is, but in the movie, is it like an evil thing? Like, or is it just sex parties? Yes, because it doesn't. I don't he, remember the movie. I don't. And I don't care if I spoil this for people. So spoiler alert. Doesn't he get a, di <laughs> a disease? Excuse isn't me. it? Isn't, um, like, it doesn't. Oh, I don't know. I can't remember that part now. Doesn't it come out that one of the girls he sleeps with or try or something and they they she was like sick or something or. I don't know. And then he gets like found out. Like mm. there's that one scene where they're like, are you supposed to be here? And they make him take his mask off and they're all like judging him with these creepy. If I saw this movie and I was 10, I, I, I wouldn't have fucking made it. It's terrifying. And I saw it as like a 20 year old. It's creepy. That's yeah. Kubrick creepy. for you. It's, it's fucking Kubrick. Yes. There is um, a place like that on the, uh, I mean, I'm sure there's more, but I know of definitely one. I don't, not personally. Um, like a friend of yours told you? Yep. A friend. No, really, a friend of mine met this girl online, and she said, I want to take you to this club. And he was like, uh, I don't really, like, go to clubs. Like, you know, like, I'm almost 50. <laughs> and she's like, oh, no, this is like a sex club. It's like, uh, you know, we swap out and he's like, uh, no, like, I'm not into that. Like, you know, uh -uh. so she's like, well, how about this? How about you just come to the club one day and 
so you could just see what it's like when no one else there. So he did. And <laughs> I don't want to say this part. I don't want to. Say it. They had sex there. And he pretended to, um, but really didn't because he said he couldn't because he was thinking about what went on in the club. And he's he's like kind of like you, Anthony. He gets skeeved out by things. So he's like, I can't, I couldn't even think about all the jizz that was in that room before me. Yeah, but the big difference is he was there. Yeah, well, right. He wasn't was skeeved halfway. out enough to be there. That was halfway insulting to me, it. but uh, it's accurate, so I'll, I'll take it. So, <clears throat> so but he said, he showed me pictures that the girl sent to him. It's It was a website. Not that you even needed like a username and password. It just showed all like the different kinds of parties that they had. Like I had like theme parties. So. Yeah. No offense to anyone involved <laughs> in these things, but I can't imagine they're of the Nicole Kidman, Tom Cruise <laughs> caliber. Am I wrong no. in that assumption? They rarely are. I mean, that was insulting, but they rare. They rarely, rarely. Just are. saying, if you have to wear a mask, but I don't think that really matters to people. When no. I, I think it's more <clears throat> about the thrill of anonymous activity. Right. I think that's really what it comes hey, down do, to. Hey, uh, consenting I, adults, do what you want to do. I don't care. But I also think there's a difference between what Janine is describing, which is kind of like a swingers club, which I think is a lot more common and tame, believe it or not than what we're talking about in Eyes Wide Shut, which is kind of like has this weird like yeah. ritual stuff, a human sacrifice ritual. Yes, kind of a thing. Right. Like, you know, it. you know, there's a dagger nearby <clears throat> and there probably shouldn't be. Yes. And also this idea that it's the super powerful and elite. Mm -hmm. And also there was a lot of people. And the fact that that amount of people could keep such a thing quiet Again, I've told this before, but <laughs> there there was a bachelor party that I was invited to once that I did not go to, but I heard people talking about it subsequently afterwards, and it was this kind of thing. <laughs> I I will tell people if I want. Um, it was this kind of thing where you needed this card to get in, and it was in this weird building, and there were all sorts of empty rooms, and and it it, it like again it wasn't. Skeevy. It wasn't exactly like this, but it was kind of like it's that thing of it, there's that thing. Where I get that feeling with this, with with the bachelor party mm. where there's this major thing happening and I don't know about it. Like you ever hear like, oh, a massive uh, drug ring was, uh, you know, they took down a massive drug ring out the 7-Eleven at blah, blah, blah. And you're like, I don't, I've been to that 7-Eleven or that 7-Eleven is the next town over. How were they running, you know, a, a four hundred thousand dollar drug empire out of the fucking seven or prostitution rings every year on long island they bust like this major prostitution ring and i'm like there's only <coughs> three million people on this island how do i not know like I, there's got to be people brag there's got to be somebody i know that went to this fucking thing and how does it how do i not know about it well, it seems wait, like the, go ahead just because you just said that this girl told um, my friend that exactly what you just said. There is someone that comes to this club that you know. Like, without a doubt, there's someone that you know that comes here because... J just the odds it, of it, yeah. She just said, like, there's so many diff different people. It's like, an, you know, an underground thing, right? That's a little bit different than Eyes Wide Shut. This is like a... It's like a swingers club, but... um like uh, apparently like there's so many people who do this like i i and like i told you my story too of, of some people that i know like yeah i couldn't but you i couldn't see, but even like these like prostitution rings like you think and i google wherever you live google this <clears throat> i'm sure it has happened in the last 10 years in your area where yep. they have taken down like a three million dollar prostitution ring and when you sit there and add up like what that could possibly be, how many times you're like, hang on a second. There's like 50,000 people that visited this prostitution ring and I'm in a town of like, you know, 500,000 people. Like how like one in 10 people went to this fucking thing and I didn't know about it. How is this possible? You've at least shaken hands with someone who went to the <laughs> partook. Excuse me. Are you okay? Do you no, this is, yeah, what's this is going why on I wasn't going to come on tonight. 
Um, <clears throat> Post Thanks for powering it. through. If you think about the amount of motels in your area, like how are these fucking places staying open? Who is going? That. There's one near me. When you're going down. Um... There's one near Janine yeah. that runs commercials on local radio for hourly rates. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> and it, it's the, the <clears throat> Comac Motor Inn. You people can oh, CMI. look it up. CMI. Yes. And it is perfectly like TMI. Ex- perf- <laughs> perfectly acceptable behavior out here on Long Island. People just go, ah, it's the Comac Motor Inn. Like, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's, there's another one that since we moved in, I'm like, how is this thing still open? It's on Sunrise Highway. And it's just, it just looks shady from the outside. You're like, you know, that's rented by the hour. But co- how do these things? Well, prostitute, oldest profession, right, in the U.S. Here's the <laughs> so thing. So there you go. Prostitute, or you're cheating on your significant other. Either well, way, that. something bad is happening in that room. Yeah, absolutely. You're not on a bu- I mean, how many of those rooms are business trip people? No yes. way. People who's are not just, staying there for a business trip. Who's just absolutely going- not? Oh, I just need a shower. <clears throat> or I need a nap. Mm-mm. <laughs> Doesn't no, make any are, sense. Those are sex boxes. I feel like this is like like uh, R. Kelly marrying a 15-year-old, uh, what's her name? Where it's Aaliyah. Kind of, uh, thank you. Where it's kind of like it happens and there was like, yeah. And then like 15 later, we're like, how the fuck did that happen? How, how did everybody? I feel like this is the same thing. Anyway. Yep. Um, so Katie Couric. So Katie Couric. <laughs> <laughs> Katie Couric uh, said that she was invited. And this is, again, so just consider the scumbaggy source of Katie Couric. Um, scumbaggy Katie Couric, source? Yeah, herself. Like, she's kind of a piece of shit in, in this uh, thing. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, because she went to the party? <laughs> she went to the party. Yep. Yeah. Katie Kirk describes being at a dinner party at Epstein's house that Epstein threw where Prince Andrew was a guest, saying the townhouse was like the eyes wide shut with a twist, creepy chandeliers and body part art. Um, so, by the way, there's two big things there. One, she went and two, fucking Prince Andrew, who was like, I, I you know, I was never running in with this crowd. He was fucking there. So, I, you know. Uh, she said that lasagna was served in bowls. I should remember this. I don't know. Which also, <laughs> by the way, you know, if I'm if I know I'm, it's it's our night in the old Anthony household. We're having soup or a salad. I'm not like, yeah, let's load up some lasagna yeah, and then bring out the money. Go Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Raviolis. Yeah, exactly. Nope. <laughs> if I have a hamburger, where there's not any sex in this house that night, it just no. can't be done anymore. When I was 22, it was a different story. Now that I'm 29, it's not it, happening. It you can barely happening. you can barely move over. Um, it wasn't happening at 22 for a different reason. Exactly. <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie to you, and I'm ashamed to admit this, but I've had to tap out in the last couple of uh, last couple of weeks. I've had some times where I've had to tap out. And I'm like, I I just need a breather. Like I just gotta get a, a towel. Gate. <laughs> Let me get a gate. I got... cut me, Mick. Give me get a Gatorade. <laughs> I'm not saying I don't get back in there and finish the job. I'm just saying I need a breather. I need a water. I need like I need a, you know, yeah, cool I need down. a corner person. I need somebody to bring in a little stool. I could sit on it. Oh my Pat, the Pat the forehead. <laughs> Ice down any swollen parts. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Put some band-aids on. <laughs> right. I'm calling up corner men at boxing places. You're having a fight? No, I'm Plan on making love with my wife. I was just hoping Ew. to come along and just, just make sure you empty the spit Ugh. bucket. Yeah. Don't say. Oh, <laughs> what? Making love? No okay. good. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Making whoopee? What do you prefer? You can't say. Oh God! No. I know you don't like. I strike out with you all the time. You don't like hoodies. You, do. you don't like. You don't. You don't approve of my vernacular. I get it. No, but uh, go ahead. All right. Anyway. Uh, she said that there were bowls Thank of you. lasagna and Epstein held court by the fireplace. Her then boyfriend, Brooks Perlin, commented on the women who took their coats, noting how young they were. This comes from a, her new biography uh, called Going There. 
Uh, an excerpt published by the Daily Mail, she writes, I couldn't imagine what Epstein and Andrew were up to apart from trying to cultivate friends in the media, which in retrospect, they must have figured they need when the pedophilia charges started rolling in. Um, well. Right, so, sta- um, devil's advocate, she was, and she went maybe because she just thought it was a party, like a get to know you, a hello party. <laughs> For millionaires. Yeah, but I'm pretty I'm trying to find it here in this piece, but I'm pretty sure this was after he got nabbed the first time. Oh, all right. I don't know. So again, she's you know, and, and I could totally see this New York elitist bullshit. Like you get invited to this and you're like, Oh, I'm you know, this is cool. I'm gonna you know mm-hmm. um, this is a million dollar thing or whatever. This a party billion. on a private island? What the hell? Well, no, this was in the Manhattan house, but he still Oh, oh okay. You know, still, this is just a, it's it's a shitty. Oh, you go for the news story too. Come on, come on. Is she yeah. the one as a reporter? Yeah, definitely. She didn't report on it. This Not is yet. twenty. This is twenty ten. Right. So he was convicted in what? Oh seven or oh eight or nine or whatever it was. So this was right after. <clears throat> yeah, and Prince Andrew was there. I mean, this is just it's so shitty. It's shitty that she went. Yeah. I mean, credit her for talking about it. It's still you're part of the fucking problem. So could this be just thinking here? She was going to be named in something and then to get ahead of it, she comes out with this book. A little preemptive strike. Could be. Maybe. Could be. Uh, she's no, been see, banned. I from, told everybody about it. I don't know why I'm named. You know. She's been banned from CBS uh, after she slammed Les Moonves. Um, she was the host of CBS God, Evening News, you remember, CBS. from 2006. Oh. What? I was, keep going. 2006 to 2011. Uh, she got invited on the uh, CBS Morning Show to promote the book. And then CBS News chiefs and producers read the book. And um, uh, she's unleashed some truths, blah, 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 at her time at NBC, dishing on her rival anchors. She also writes snootily about CBS and its news division. She reveals that when her gig at CBS Evening News started to go downhill uh, because of snagging ratings, Les Moonves tried to shuffle her over to the mornings. Uh, she did not want to go. Uh, she said she didn't leave the morning. Sh- she didn't leave the number one morning. No, she didn't leave the morning show. She helped make number one so she can go to a third place morning show. Kind of a dick comment. Um, she said I'd... I'd come here to accomplish something, and if it didn't work, it didn't work. I'd rather leave the network than retreat to a morning show, which at the time was a cheap imitation of the other two. Uh, Corrick Ed in her book about Les Moonves was fired without severance in the wake of sexual misconduct allegations in 2018. I always like Les Moonves, even though he was a close talker with bad breath. She added in her book of her rival at CBS at the time. Uh, at an affiliates meeting, Les would smugly disclose how he finally got me to say yes. We drank many bottles of expensive wine on a sofa in my apartment. Don't worry, my wife was in the next room. Hardy har, Les said. Hardy har. <coughs> How many people okay. say hardy har? Are you all right down there? No, not really. What's going on? <laughs> you need water or something? I had I have Vid? a post nasal drip. Hate that. It's so Sore throat. Yeah, it's starting to get it's it's like scratchy. It doesn't mm. hurt. You know, hate it. Just annoying. We'll see how uh, long I last. That's what she what's said. What's it called? Um, what the hell is the name of that? Claritin. The best for that. Really? My father swears by that, and I thought he was just being Claritin D. an old, annoying guy, and he's right. It it does it does yeah. work really. Claritin really well. D, the one you have to ask the pharmacist to get for you and show ID. Ooh, to get. then I feel like That's, so like a bad girl when I when That's I get one of those. Yeah. Can I have the D, please? Claritin, of course. <laughs> <clears throat> um, let's talk about Urban Meyer cheating, which pre-show, when I said Urban Meyer to Frank, he said, what is that? Janine, do you know Urban Meyer? No. Okay. Thank you. Are you surprised? No. <clears throat> Country uh, singer? He is, nope. He's a legendary yes. college football coach. College football, too. Who... <laughs> He goes like, oh, he's a football coach. I went, okay. I don't well, know any coaches. Right. Go, and now it's college football. Like, you, you oh, know, come on. You break. You Continue. Really can't, 
you can't finish a sentence on this show. He's a legendary college coach who is coaching in the NFL right now. Okay. So basically no one really knows him except people who went to the college and then what they watched fucking sure home people. games for three years. And then they were like, Oh, never mind, It's college football. I'm right. sure big football fans know who he is, but I'm not a huge football fan. Well, he coaches yeah. the Jacksonville Jaguars, which have been the oh. laughing stock of the league for quite some time now. And I'm supposed to know who the laughing stock of the league's co- coach is. Right. Not even the number one team. They yeah. had the Thursday night game this past week in football. Uh, they lost their fourth straight to the Bengals, 24 to 21. On Saturday, uh, Urban Meyer started trending on Twitter. And people couldn't figure out why. And then they started, uh, people at this bar started posting pictures. Again, apologies to people who are listening. This is a real visual. But people started. Oh, I saw this. Posting. Fo- <laughs> I you. saw this. People started posting photos of him. By the way, look at those eyes. He is. Fucked up. Hammered. Yep. Those are Andrew Cuomo in the mansion hammered eyes. Ah. I mean, um, I mean, he could get it. He can get it. Urban Meyer? He can get it. I, <laughs> Damn. You I think? Love, I love that you offer this information up so quickly. Yeah, right, we didn't so even... With, I'm prompted. You didn't this, even tell me the story. Go ahead. This is the video, though, that's oh making some noise um, that some guy in Texas, like, he saw that Urban Meyer was twending, trending. He took this video, and he put out there, like, is this why Urban Meyer's trending? This might be a little loud. <laughs> Look at this blonde just grinding up on him. Is that me? <laughs> That's not you, J. Sabs, but that is the J. Sabs move. If you've ever been to a wedding with J. Sabs, she's doing this to not only Any her white haired individual in the room, but multiple people. Yes, this is. Yeah, this is her. You should sue this girl now that I think about I it. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so what's the deal? Is he is he married? So then his wife tweets. Ooh. no. No. Meanwhile, I'm babysitting. Oh, God. Hashtag my choice. Hashtag Mimi rules. Hashtag buddy deserved a night out. Oh, so she's cool with it. Is she, though? He deserved a night out. Is he buddy? Um, He didn't deserve um, to get his penis grinded on by that blonde Janine lookalike. Maybe he did. He had a hard... uh, well, he had a difficult uh, week to, to the Bengals. Yeah, I mean, I mean, still. So today, Urban is saying, um, uh, by the way, they asked the Jaguars about this, and the Jaguars are like, we're not going to comment on it. That's pretty embarrassing when they go to a, your employer and are like, hey, it's like your head coach was drunk getting grinded up on by townies at a bar. He your said, I just triumphed. triumphed. I just apologized to the team and the staff for being a distraction. It was stupid. Meyer said during a press conference on Monday, I explained everything that happened and owned it. And, you know, just stupid should have not had myself in that kind of position. Then he explained that yeah. there was a big group next to our restaurant and they wanted me to come over and take pictures. And I did. Uh, he said the group was trying to pull me out on the dance floor, screwing around, and I should have left. Uh, Myers said he spoke to a bunch of team leaders as well as the whole team. They're good. I, mean, I think there's something about his wife. Like, he's talking about the team. Like, wh- what about your wife who's at home watching the grandkids? Damn. Like, that's fucked up. That is it is fucked, fucked up. On Friday, uh, Myers' wife seemed to hint that she was aware of the viral post in a tweet. Meyer admitted that he's concerned that the situation could hinder his ability to lead the team. In his first season as head coach. Oh, I thought there was a thing here about the wife, but I guess not. What's below? What's enjoying? Oh, that's the same video. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, th- so these, by the way, these are just a couple. Of, oh. So this was the party that he actually went to. He went to go visit a friend of his who just had a kid. And then that led to a blonde girl like grinding up on him. Like, Dry this humping. is just a horrible. Could you imagine? If Janine's husband was in this position, we'd have a murder oh, he, on our yeah, hands. He'd be gone. Why do you think that? Because you're told a psychopath. Because what? By the way, you're we're psychopath. both right. Frank yeah. and I were both correct. What'd you say? I said psychopath. He said you told us as such. 
Okay, Frank. You're right. I'll give you that one, Frank. <laughs> you said it. If he, you know, the guy went to a bachelor party he had no control over, and you didn't talk to him for two weeks. Yeah. Because yeah. like, he mean, was in a wrong, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. Not a position. Was. Not but, a position. Right. I mean, fault. if you look at this, there is no, like, you just go, excuse me, thank you. Like, this is going on for far to you and by the way he's too famous for yeah, this to, he is but you know what if he was so it's like he's at a bachelor party just not paying the girl to do this this is worse no so this is worse this is worse if this is a stripper at a bachelor party whatever right or stripper is just there for your money this girl she i might feel be there for his money too though <laughs> Well, maybe, but I feel like she would have taken it. Like she would have went all the way. Whereas if a stripper is just just trying to get the money out of your pocket, you know yo, what I mean? Yo, let me ask you. Would you? You, the, you know what, Anthony? You're the same fucking way because wow, you wouldn't like it if your wife was doing this to someone else too. Of course, I wouldn't like. Like, why yeah, would what, I like? Why you, is that even a question? You're saying this like I'm a hypocrite. I'm with you. But then, why wouldn't mine be a murder? But you would mur you would murder because you we could go back a couple of podcasts, but you we literally had to have a we had a podcast meeting without you on like mm. should we call the cops? Should we not? <laughs> Is guy okay? Is this one of those situations where we think it's all good and then all of a sudden there's Wait, a camping trip and we're on the news going, I don't know, everything seemed fine. We're turning these episodes over as evidence. Right, exactly. I figure I feel like I even made that joke of like, I can't believe we're gonna have to give this episode to the FBI one day. Yep. What were we talk what were we talking about? Probably nothing. And you were like, Hey, wouldn't it be funny if I killed my husband because he right. looked at a stripper? No, that's not what happened. I mean I can't remember the whole thing, but I'm pretty yeah, sure that was close. I think exactly that was dead on. Exact dead on. Um no, I have to dead say Dead on this, balls accurate. He is too famous for this. If this is Bill in accounting, maybe you can get away with it. But you're the head football coach of one of of one of 32 NFL teams. Like, there's no it, it, there's no fucking way. Like this, like you put yourself in this dumbass position. Sorry, in a sports bar. It's not like you're in the, you know, a place where sports fans aren't going to be. Right. You know, you're not at the local chess tournament. Yeah, you're at a sports bar. Your pro your face is probably on one of the TVs in that room. Uh, yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Especially because you're the only game. If this was Friday or Saturday, you were the only NFL game on those highlights. Damn. Until Sunday. Damn. So I yeah. mean, I'm sure he was uh, generously inebriated. Yeah. How does the wife not get super pissed off at this? She's got to be fucking. I bet she was. I bet she was through the roof. Uh, do you want to talk about Facebook, Instagram going down or oh. restless anal syndrome? What would you like to do next? Ooh, restless anal syndrome. Of course. No, um, Facebook, um, Instagram. Actually, I think that I'm, I'm kind of sick because of this, because as soon as I could not go on, I started to get all these symptoms. <laughs> You had FMO. Florida. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. If you're missing out. Yeah. FOMO. FOMO. And then all you have left is WebMD. So you're Googling and making it all worse. I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh my God, what's going yeah. on here? Um, I, I cannot believe that it lasted this long. That's what she said. You know who I, <laughs> you know who I think is behind this whole thing? Well, yeah. Like Tom over at MySpace. Oh yeah. He's making his, his move right now. His comeback. What are you stalking what she said. my Twitter? Is that what you said? Yeah. Nope. That had nothing to do with it. It came up with it organically, my friend. No, you know what? It, you probably picked it from. Um, no, I didn't uh, pick it from anywhere. Horny white guy jokes. Horny white guy jokes? What the corny, fuck? Corny, oh. corny. Oh, corny. <laughs> Someone was like, what the hell is that? Why is All right. That? Corny, yeah. I'll give you. <laughs> Not horny. White guy. Oh my god. There he is. Here's the culprit. Look at that smile. That bastard. Yep. Now where were you? Where were you when this happened? Where were you? This is like September eleventh. Where were you when this happened? Where was I when what? When he posted that? I don't know. When, no, when this when Facebook and Instagram went down. Oh yeah, where 
Whatever happened to Tom? Is he still around? Yeah, he fucking cashed out. He sold to who? Who was dumb enough to buy this? So it was Fox or somebody or <laughs> Yahoo, oh, Verizon. I forget. It changed hands a couple times. I Probably think. Yahoo. And then I think Justin Timberlake bought it eventually or some shit or some, I don't know. Some kind of movie about it. What uh, is MySpace still going? Is that still a thing? No, I don't think you can. I there, for, at a, for a time there, you could actually. They did try and go back. I think when Timberlake bought it, but now I don't. Let me see. Let me go right now. Uh, today, t- I'll tell you what. If they're ever gonna make a comeback, today they got to do it on a day like today. Yep. Oh yeah. They have to just wait until Facebook goes down and then they then slide in. Come on over. Yeah. But how would you t- tell people about the about that if they're not on? The other two platforms, Twitter, <laughs> yeah, Twitter. I guess all right. So, TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram went down at eleven thirty. And by the way, we'll talk about the Facebook whistleblower in a second. But Facebook is so full of shit. They're like, we know, we know that some of our users are having some issues. Some the fucking thing went down globally, like yeah. it was down. And some people were even speculating that it was a, a DNS issue, which is like a technical thing. But yeah. basically. Not only that it was down, but that somebody like fucking deleted it and it is gone, like gone. But that forever. didn't happen. No, I, it's back. Well, I know Instagram is back. Is Facebook back? Facebook's mm-hmm. back. Yeah. Okay, so they both came back. Um, but here's what happened: so many when they both went down. By the time two o'clock came around, eleven thirty, they go down. At two o'clock, Twitter starts having some issues because it's being so overloaded yeah. by users because people can't get on Facebook or Instagram, so they're just flocking to any social media. So Twitter started to have some issues, and they uh, they issued a statement uh, saying that they had that. Even though at the time that they went down, uh, Twitter literally tweeted, here, let me bring this up for everybody, which I thought was the troll of the century. This is what Twitter tweeted. Ha. Hello, literally everyone. That's that's <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, it's true. Do you see the thing below with McDonald when they From replied McDonald's. to McDonald's? Yeah. Hi. What could I get you? And you see what? Fifty nine point six million nuggets for my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, come on over. We're having a party at Twitter. Yeah. Um. So I don't really use. Twitter all that much, but I had to today. I had to because there was nothing feeding my addiction. Nothing. Was your was your OnlyFans page still up? I mean, I might have made my most amount of money today on that. <laughs> See, well, <laughs> good. Comes I mean, out I, I I went to TikTok too, but I mean, yeah. I was like, YouTube. oh my god, this is there something wrong with our Wi-Fi? Because my husband, you know, he's an IT professional. And the Wi-Fi in this house is crazy. Like he has it set up pretty much on every floor outside in the backyard. We have just, he's nuts with it. So I was like, yo, was something wrong? And then um, I texted him and he's like, oh no, there's a major outage from a provider. And I was like, well, can you fix it? (laughs) Ah. Obviously I know, I know he couldn't, but. Just a little geek humor. Tell me, tell me, get off his ass and fix this right. thing. But I, I, I couldn't stay home. I had to leave my. I was like, we're going out. We're going out because I can't do this. <laughs> so you feel disconnected from the world. It, we live on social media now. I texted my fr- my friend who I used to work with, and I was like, "Yo, what are we gonna do right now?" And he's like, "I don't, I don't know." He's like. I feel like something is missing. I'm like, yeah, I know. And he's like, I don't I'm like, he's like, I'm starting to get itchy. I'm like, oh, me too. I feel like I, I don't know what I'm going to do something. Yeah. Imagine it all goes down. That's, we got a little glimpse of it today. And how you felt. Imagine it all went down for like days. I can't help, but have you seen Ready Player One? Um, yes. I saw some of it. Yes. All right. I feel like it's, it's one of the most underrated films ever. It's a ever good one. Made. I feel like it's one of these movies that was okay, did okay box office wise, but like in 20 years, people are going to look back at it like, holy shit, this movie, you know, kind of like how Idiocracy nobody loved. And then all of a sudden it's like, holy shit, everything in Idiocracy became, you know, the truth. Yep. Um, I feel like it's the same thing for Ready Player One. So Ready Player One, for those who don't know, it's, uh, it's a Spielberg movie and it's about this guy who creates this virtual internet 
um, but it becomes like this this game, and it's like you you wear a full on bodysuit, and everything that happens on this internet, you you feel. It's weird. It's weird. So like it, you have a full on avatar. You run. You jump. You you basically put on this full suit, the mask, and everything, and you get onto this. A treadmill looking thing so that you could run and jump it's and sort of like the matrix only you're aware of it kind of like the matrix but you, yeah you're voluntarily going into this the game, world. it's like a video game world right and then the guy who creates it leaves uh he dies and he leaves behind the key to this internet so it, it, imagine if like it, it was oh, God. for all intents and purposes goes i'm gonna leave a clue somewhere on facebook and whoever finds it is going to own Facebook. Right. And so this becomes like the mode of this thing now is to like these people that are hunting out or doing these races and trying to follow these clues to get it. Anyway, long story short, spoiler alert if you want to see it, mute me here. Um, the, the protagonist finds the fucking thing and takes over the internet. And the first thing that he does is shuts it down. For like three days every single week so people can get out and live their actual fucking lives damn and i feel like that's the same thing with this like and that's what we saw today like you look at you you're like fuck i gotta go out and do something and it's like well that's yeah that's the way it used to be back in the the terrible di- times we should, we should all be doing it that being said though my entire weekend i'll talk about my weekend at the end of the show here oh i can't wait to hear yeah. about it yeah we're all clamoring to get a hold of your weekend. My Edge t- of our seats. God, like, sorry. I'm what so makes crazy. you think we want to know about your weekend? Can't wait. If anybody was curious as to how I stay so grounded, this is basically, you're looking at it. Yeah. This is we're why all, I came we're on all, tonight. <laughs> we're all dying to hear about your weekend. <laughs> anyway, my whole weekend, which was in real life, non-social media, was still fueled by social media because I everything that I did... In you, the real world, I found out about on social media. Sex right. club. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sex club. Well, the one, the one, yes. Right. Glory hole. Not the, not the third one we went to, but the second and the first one. Right. Um, Facebook whistleblower. We kind of knew this information already. I've been saying this for the longest time. By the way, all the do your research people, listen up. All the people that are like, do your research, you're being fooled. I feel like I've been saying this for a year and a half. Like, actually, you're being fooled. You know, you're part Ooh. of an algorithm. Ooh. You're, you're getting served the same amount of bullshit that mainstream media is fucking putting out there. Uh, this came out in the Wall Street Journal. We knew about a lot of this, but it just hit 60 minutes, and so it's trending again. We actually have a whistleblower here. Uh, this is a young lady who works for Facebook, and she's going to explain how the algorithm works. Basically... Facebook knew that it was spewing and spreading hate and in some cases false information, but because it was so profitable to them, they just kept on going. So here's the whistleblower from this past Sunday night on uh, 60 Minutes. It's an engagement and they can tell exactly what. And they also know if you stopped on it and looked at it, that's one level. Then if you click on it, that's another level. If after you click on it, you like it and share it, that's another level. So they're tracking all of this information. Boring. <laughs> Did you say boring? Yeah, well, people don't want to be bored, so they rather... It's, it, it is like kind of sick, but people rather fight than be happy or just like agree with someone on Facebook. Yes, we it's that misery loves company, right? Sure. We, we like to be angry. Not saying all. Obviously, well, I feel but... that falls into line with every social media, because let's say you like uh, guitars. You click on guitars, you, you, you interact with the things that show you that. And then that's what you're going to see. So it's just following what you're interacting with. Right. I mean, the problem, what she's saying is that it's supposed to have been taking down the negative stuff, right? No. Well, no. Or what? The problem is, is out of the thousand things they can show you, yeah. they choose to show you the thing that's going Ooh. to anger you. <laughs> well, they choose to show you the thing that you interacted with most. 
And that, no, I think in most cases is the thing that angers you. No, because no? The, if, if you look at the data, if I, if I click on 15 guitar posts and I click on, you know, 15, uh, let's say I'm a, I'm a Democrat, I'm an anti-Trumper and I click on 15 anti-Trump things and it comes time to show you the guitar thing or the anti-Trump thing, it they're going to, the anger yeah, thing. they're going to okay. show you the thing that angers yeah, you. Yeah, it's more. fucked up. That's fucked up. So, and here's and here's the thing. This is a tried and true formula. Like radio has used this for the longest time. Fifteen years in radio, and I've had experience with sports talk radio. Okay, this or political talk radio, whatever you you know, whatever it is. You can have a team winning a championship, and you can look at the ratings, and they'll be high. Or you can have a team that lost a big game in double overtime, and it's double what they would be for for a happy story and radio hosts know this that you keep it and and have admitted this openly if you have a horrible angry story that becomes the main topic of that show that day instead of the happy great fun story because it drives more numbers so social media is just doing what other media has been doing since fucking forever yeah they're just doing it probably more efficiently the problem becomes you have all these people now that this has become their own, their only world, and they're only seeing this stuff. And so I've been in these conversations with people all the time where they're like, oh, well, this, 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 this. And I'm like, what you, I, I could tell, I, I could tell, I'm like, I know exactly what you're clicking on. Because if you really read and see what is really out there, you just know that that's not true. That's just part of the story. And all the people that are like, do your research and do this or do that. First of all, what you're really doing is not research. You're just going out online and finding somebody like-minded to justify your own beliefs. Exactly. It's two completely different things. Research is actually going out and I mean, we all know, we all did research in college. Like you, you do a study, you find out information, you know, you put a hypothesis out there, you prove or, or disprove it. It goes out for peer review. They bounce it off. You know, it, they, there's a process to actual legit research. Yeah. And with that comes a certain objectivity that you have to be as objective as you can. Like if you're doing research on a, a flower, you're, you have no feelings one way or the other about this flower. So you're just going to give the facts about it. Right. But if you hate that flower... Right. Then you're gonna give the shittiest. This is the worst flower I've ever seen in my life, and you're only gonna look up shit that makes everybody else hate that flower. But when you look at all the stuff that's happened over the last year and a half, the the rise and fall of Trump, uh, the Black Lives Matter, COVID, you go up and down the ladder of all of these things. It was all driven by this particular algorithm. And it, it didn't have, it doesn't have to be this way. And I, I actually think it's short sighted by Facebook because although you're getting a, a, a pump right now, there is a thing called Facebook fatigue. They changed the algorithm in 2018 because people were just getting tired of seeing the same shit. Now with this change came, you were going to see stuff from your friends and family more. If you were in a Facebook group, see, if you like a page, you kind of are interested in it. If you join a Facebook group, like let's say about flowers, if you like, a, if you like, you know, who makes flowers? I don't know, whatever. Scott's lawn for fucking flower for seeds and shit. You probably like Scott's lawn. You but if you join flowers, if you join a fucking flower group, a hmm. gardening group, you're fucking into that shit. So you're seeing more groups now on your Facebook feed than you ever have before. Sure. But if you don't like Donald Trump, and you click on this thing or that thing, now all you're seeing is that same sort of information and you can no longer get the other side of the story. It just doesn't exist to you anymore. So that when you come across a podcast like this or somebody else giving you a different side of things, you, how many times have we seen, do your research, yeah. I used to like this show, or this is fucking ridiculous. Like, no, it's not ridiculous you're living in a fucking bubble. Yeah, you're getting one side, the side that you like, and right. you're, you're not even seeing. Way to promote your show. 
<laughs> I mean, our whole livelihood on this thing exists for this thing, so it sucks to shit on it. But the truth of the matter is, is again, if you're an anti-Trumper, you probably fell under this thing. If you're a pro-Trumper, you fell under this thing. You know what I'm saying? But if you're if you're if you're a person that knows what's going on, and and you yeah, you go you go to social media, and I feel like we've all known that social media shows us what we want to see. We all kind of got that a lot a long time ago, and we all said, "All right, we're going to look at the, like it's, you right, look but, at stuff, but, and it shows you that stuff." Right, but the difference is, no, I know they and could they see stuff. in the data it. that it was wrong and it was bad, and they knew yes, no, that if they changed it, I'm they would make it. less money, and that's what they've done. I'm not defending it. What yeah. I'm saying is, as if you're a person who is looking for both sides of the story or the truth or whatever, you should probably know that what you're getting. Yeah. In your social media is the stuff that you just like it's not the stuff that it's not every side so if you look if you're looking for research or your answers or whatever you want to know don't go just to your feed your wall or your whatever your twitter but by the way google does the same thing if you search something on google yeah oh absolutely they're more if, apt to serve you the, the, your results will be different from everybody else's results and your results are more likely to be on something that you are going to click on yeah but you have to get every side of it so you know you know what the sides are you look at those sides you know you could do your own you don't have to type in google you don't have to type in well here's the other problem you can type every, in the actual websites and everybody will say use DuckDuckGo. don't use google but DuckDuckGo, you know is is filled with people that are rejecting google you know, i'm not saying search engines i'm saying if you want to know uh, what happened at a, at a Trump rally? You could go to one side's news organization. You can go to the other side's news. You don't have to go to the one that only gives you one side. You don't have to go to Google. You don't have to go to to Facebook or Twitter. You go to those news companies. And they're going to give you their side. They'll give you their <laughs> side. But now at least you're getting both sides. Oh, I've seen you saying to go to both of their sides. Exactly. So yeah. instead of just going to your side. I don't believe any side, of their sides. Well, you, also, you go to the videotape. They show, you know, you see. Well, how many times have we done a story here where they're like, where did you get this from? And you're like, the person's fucking mouth? Like, it's on yeah, tape. they're it's saying right it. fucking there. A lot of, oh, so many times. And like, oh, oh, he never true. said that. And it's like, they fucking said it right here, pal. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Come on, numb nuts. I mean, you want to find something, it's there to find. You, you don't have to look very far. Yeah. yeah. The easy step is to go on your social media or type it in Google. But if you know the sources and if you have all these different access points, you don't have to just randomly type in Google. You can, yeah. but then you, you have the options that you can keep scrolling and go, but this, all right, this is one. the thing. And j this is not a swipe at you, but the people who don't, who, who are, are a veers can't say it anymore on YouTube anymore. I don't even know what the hell that is. Who don't prefer the, the, Oh, yeah. Rack starvation. <laughs> um, this is what's happening to them. Like, I, and again, I'm not saying Janine. I think uh, Janine has expressed herself on this plenty of times. We, this is not about you. But like, I hear from people all the time that they're like, well, this or and they send me stuff and they're like, look at this. And I'm like, look at that. And I'm like, you're, you're just, you know, you're just falling for. You're people. looking at what you want to look at. You're, you're looking, looking at what they're at what, showing you. Right, you're looking at what you want to look at, but it's also like so these. You're being played by an algorithm, is oh, really what it comes down to. Snap. You're, you're just being Put a played by in your an ass, algorithm. You've played yourself. It, that's all it is, oh, and people geez. get so mad at us sometimes. But it's like, you know, at least look. All three of us have different opinions, and I think that's a great part of the show. We each, you know, take different sides on every single thing. Sometimes we're on this side one week, sometimes we're on the other side the next week. That's just kind of the way it is. I feel like we are a great, balanced, independent thinking show. And you just don't have that out there in social media land. And it's changing the way people think. And that's really bad and really dangerous. And the reason why this woman came out and said something is because she wants it to change. And I think she's doing a great job because... Not only do I think it's better for society that it changed, I think it's better for Facebook that it changed 
because you don't want to live in a world where you're constantly angry. Like yep. I know it's satisfying to click on it that first time. <sighs> and you're like that motherfucker. I knew it. You know, I, I knew that son of a bitch. You know what I'm saying? It's fun and satisfying, but it's just long term. You're going to get burnt out by this and you're going to abandon it. It's basically yeah. what it comes down to. And I feel like the biggest bit of evidence for that is TikTok, because on TikTok, you're they're not favoring political content. No, they're definitely they, not. Thankfully, they're, that's why I like it. <laughs> And that is only what Janine just said is going to increase 100 fold over the next year, two years and three years. And you're going to see that platform kick the ever loving shit out of the other platforms because that's, they are fun. That's assuming that the political world stops becoming interesting. It already is not interesting. Yeah, but it's interesting enough that it's a huge focal point now. When Trump was the president, we had. 1400 stories a day on every time he sneezed and unbuttoned his jacket button oh it's less interesting now absolutely nobody gives a fuck about joe biden and what he's doing nobody cares it's it's, it's still he out sleeps there. all day it's <laughs> out there but nobody gives <laughs> a shit because that that's what everyone says it's not enticing it's not even the even the people on the right that are angry uh, there's a democratic president they don't even give a shit and it's really slowing down like nobody this guy's trying to He's trying to push a historic bill that would rival the the uh, what what did uh, what should we call it Roosevelt do the the New Deal? Yeah, it, it would it would trump it, part of the the expression, by a million fold, and nobody gives a fuck. Nobody cares. Mm. I don't even know what yeah, it is. See, because it's not reality TV anymore. No, it's, it's true. true. It's not a. Freaking but game Facebook, show. for all the shit that they did and they suspended Trump, they fucking knew, especially the election stuff, they knew it was bullshit and they let it go. Yep. Yeah, no, I'm not. They, they're they got the answer for this. But how? There's no regulations. How many planes did you land today? Got that uh, coming in, coming in at you. <laughs> I don't know how the fuck he wears these. What the fuck is wrong with him? Is that your what are you doing right now? Is he a telemarketer? What happened to him? I thought he had a real job at some point. <laughs> this is what he uses. This I'll is take what a number uses. 10 with a, with a large fry, please. <laughs> Let's get into something. Real. So anyway, so for all the, all the do your research people, you're not doing research, first of all, and you're being fucking played by an algorithm. And I'm happy that it is out there now and it is like well documented that that is exactly what is happening to you. And, and for all the people, I, by the way, I love Candace Owens today. She, as everybody was Ugh. running to Twitter, sorry, she tweeted, go to parlor. Like nobody is parlor is a fucking wasteland and <laughs> nobody gives a shit about parlor yeah. because it's just one sided and the same bullshit. The, even the conservatives, do you know why they don't like Parler? Why? Because there's not enough sh Democrats on there that they can make fucking fun fight of. with. and make oh, yeah. Just a, yeah, it's too much agreeing with each other. It's all well, on the same side. Can we no move to the next subject, which is your um, your weekend? Because I can't wait. Oh, no, you don't want to do restless anal syndrome. anal syndrome? Okay, let's go fast with that because I'm slowly fading. Yeah, so we do have to wrap she up. She said. My, this, anus, my anus is restless. <laughs> this, this is what this is. This is the newest COVID-19 symptom. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, God. Okay. A newly published medical report by doctors in Japan has revealed a mysterious condition associated with a disease called restless anal syndrome. Uh, it is named likened to the more commonly restless leg syndrome. Oh. Uh, a man... See, no, but I get it that your leg moves a lot. So what are they telling you about your anus? A man it started with a guy in Japan told physicians that he'd become... He began suffering deep anal discomfort in the area between his anus and genitals, prompting him with the essential Tate. urge to move his bowels. <laughs> um, but that gave him no relief. So gave him the shits? Well, he felt like he had to go, and then even when he went, he got no relief. As days passed, the patient observed that, physically act, uh, that physical activity seemed to relieve his stressed anus while lying low only increased his discomfort, which also spiked during the evening hours. <laughs> now, discomfort, meaning it was just irritated or yeah. itchy? 
Yeah, itchy. Felt did like you had to go. Wrench it? Did you twist it? Did you pull it? Did you, <laughs> did you tweak it? Did you? <laughs> By the way, this is the worst feeling in the world. When there's something wrong back there, not comfortable. Not a great. Not a something great wrong. Sure, but what the? I'm still trying to figure out. Restless. It's just a feeling that you have to go. That's like more internal than right there on the. Uh, precipice. <laughs> like I like how he goes like right, right there. there right in the little. But it, we're talking about taint discomfort. It's oh taint God. discomfort. It's is essentially what it is. Yeah. I mean, restless leg syndrome is probably the worst thing ever. To me, I don't, I've had it when I was pregnant. I had it all three times. You had restless leg syndrome? Yep. And basically, you don't know what that is, do you? No. Wait, what is it? So when you go to sleep at night and you're laying down in your bed, you just feel like you have to continuously move your leg. And like, you just feel like you have to. It's just like, it's a weird feeling. I get that. I get that all the time. Isn't it so annoying? It sucks. It, feel, it feels like you just, you have all this pent up energy in your leg and you're like, I gotta, I just gotta get it out. I gotta yeah. move. So poor Gaetano, if you know what I mean, during those nights. No, um, I would have to get up and walk around the first floor of my house just so... Gatan was like, where are, you, where are you going? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just taking, making laps over here because I, I, I couldn't do So there is actually like an old wives tale that if you put a bar of soap underneath your sheets, near your feet, it helps. And guess what? It did. Are you for real? I'm not kidding you. My mother told me about it. And she's like, put a bar of soap underneath your, your sheets. And I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, did she tell you that when she called from Boston? What was that accent you just did? <laughs> Put a bar soap on. Put a bar of soap on there. Was she Bobcat Goldthwait? <laughs> and I was like, oh, what? Okay. So I did it and it worked, but sometimes it wouldn't work either. So it's like the most annoying feel. Oh, God. I think I have restless anal leg syndrome. I can't get fucking comfortable on this episode. I've moved around more on this. Yeah, this. I know. Me too. I'm fucking. And I'm... you see me. I can't sit still anyway. I know. By so way, imagine what, what you're both describing about getting to bed and feeling like you have energy. I have, I have never felt that, nor do I ever think I could possibly feel that. I fucking hit that bed. I am done, done. Yeah, but every now and then you, should, I don't know. It's it's a weird thing. You're just up and you're just your leg, your leg. You just you feel. And even when you move <sighs> it, it it doesn't. It doesn't you know when you help. get like that, your leg falls asleep thing. It's like the exact opposite of of that tingle. It's like a tingly feeling that it's like little electric. You just you want to move it. You want to shake out the electricity in your leg. It's very weird. But I've been I don't know if anybody noticed my camera's been shaking this whole episode because my leg just never stops. I, I keep as, I as think I'm going. you need serious psychiatric help because between this and you punching, what do you mean like sleep, that? I, I just. That. I think you got you. We we got to get to the bottom of you. We're gonna do a whole episode on on you. Yeah, Don't put more you down one. on the couch. Need more than one episode. I think we do. We need <laughs> we need a whole fucking uh, series. I think. Um. Again, this hasn't been proven, and always check with your doctor. But we believe that the cure for restless anal syndrome is a brand new Anthony on air mug. I'm just, you know, it, trials are going. Prove on us right wrong. Now. You can't say it's not true. Right. No. You can't say it's not true. Uh, shopanthonyonair.com has the brand new. Uh, oh, and I, I, we got it. I got it. Boom! In. There it there is. There it is. So it actually, it looks. Uh, I forgot that I had this. Uh, it looks good. Like that's the, big, that's accurate. Look at that. That's lovely, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's a beaut. I got the old logo on the back there, or the front, depending if you're a lefty or a righty. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Very for, nice. Oh, should we do it the other way for the lefties? So that the microphone is on this side for them. I don't oh. know. Is that a thing? Can you do that? I'm not sure. I don't know, we'll have to talk to the design team. Yeah, because you could do front and back if you just switch front and back. That's what know. she said. I don't know how it works, Frank. Uh, but Next. Uh, grab your Can you put Kaiser Sose on the bottom? That would be great if we could do that. That'd be good. I, I would love that. Uh, shopanthonyonair.com and uh, grab your mug today. Of course, if you purchase a mug, you'll be helping support the uh, show. Uh, this fucking Tony Bennett story makes me cry a little, so let's go through it quickly. Did you see him on 60 Minutes? No. This fucking Anderson Cooper? Um, he's, he did his last, uh, show at, uh, Radio City Music Hall. 
Um, and uh, he's retiring because he's got Alzheimer's. Oh. And uh, you'll yep. see. Oh, we'll, we'll, I'll set this up by the time Jay Sepps get back. Uh, but you'll see, and you'll hear in the clip if you're just uh, listening. Uh, they're walking and they're talking about uh, like how many show, how many uh, songs he's going to perform at the concert, and he literally like, he has no idea what's happening. Like they're talking to him, and his wife is there helping him, and he just has no fucking clue God. what's going on. It's really hard to watch. But then, like the reason why I'm sharing it though is because like then you watch him go on stage and like that he's in his he element. He's fucking just comes himself. Along. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Uh, you let me, you guys let me know if the volume is, is off or bad on this. So, but here's looking yeah. well. There's another, let me see if I can cue up another one where they're talking about, um, they're talking about the song, the song choice of like what he's going to do that night. And then he just like walks out on stage and just like, just flat out murders his set. The guy was born to be a performer. That's yeah. Uh, that's obvious. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Tony Bennett. Oh, God. Oh, okay. Here, this is the, here, this is the part. God opened the show. Amazing. You can see it in his eyes when he sees the crowd and everything. Yeah. And he throws his he knows exactly up. what he's got to do. Yeah. And he's, he's on. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, that's so sad. But sad at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's can it. still yeah. fucking sing. Oh, yeah. He's, right. He hasn't lost a note. And it's so, but it's so sad though, because like he obviously, he, I get the retirement part of it, but then like at the same time, it's like maybe he should continue to do this just right, because exactly. It might be keeping it's helpful him going. Right. Yeah, it keeps everything in, intact as much as possible. I'm sure he'll he'll keep singing, but maybe privately and just you know, just to, as a hobby, I guess. Maybe. Damn, I don't want to get old. <laughs> Neither do I. It's, and it's happening, and now it's fucking scary. Uh, speaking of never giving up, William Shatner is going uh, to go into outer space on a Blue Origin rocket. Captain oh, Kirk. God, this doesn't. Sup this is like, oh. <laughs> what? Uh, you know, I think he's probably the one of the most corniest human beings alive. Although I don't think he's a human being. I think he's an alien. But that's a whole nother story. Mm, I'm okay. with Janine on this one. So, Thank I'm you. thinking alien all the way. If someone's going, if, if a celebrity is going into space got to be someone from star trek or star wars i'll tell you what credit mm. bezos for this one it's a brilliant move he's like how can i get some press out of this because everybody gets press out of going in the outer space i know get the you, fuck in you bring captain kirk you bring captain kirk now is he you think you dress him up in his captain kirk outfit uh, you have you to. have to yeah you right? have to you can't put him in the stupid fucking hat because he's a rock it man rock oh my man. god I, you know that? Do you know that? You guys, you guys are breaking up. Everybody's saying Rocket Man. I, I don't think anybody buys that son of a bitch's albums. He keeps putting them out. I don't. I don't know what entirely. For. Someone's buying them. Um, let's talk about the weekend. I had Oof. a lovely weekend. Here we go. Buckle up. But I had. A, well, let me tell you. Let me tell you the, the most interesting part. Mm. I was out. It was far away. I did not have my Jumpstart Coffee Company. Oh. So. I was in the need for coffee. I stumbled upon a Dunkin' Donuts. My standard order, whenever I used to go to these places, more before I've had Jumpstart Coffee Company in my life, was I would get like an iced caramel macchiato and I would always say half the pumps. Because if they put like six pumps in one of these things, I really only want three. I want to taste the coffee. So I say this to the young lady. I go half. Uh, I go, I, I order ice caramel macchiato, extra shot, half the pumps. So she goes, you mean like you want like just half of a pump? <gasps> and, I, and I went, I was like, are you fucking with me? Or because I'm in my head, I'm thinking, do you watch this show or are you like, right, right. The odds on that, camera. though. By the way, you can't make that leap. Like you can't be like, oh, you watch. You cannot make that leap. You know what Sorry. I mean? Okay. Yeah, I've, I made that mistake before. Go ahead. <laughs> but I go, because I, I, then I was going to be like, no, I want half the amount of pumps. But when you right. think about it, it's really the same thing. It is the same. Because right, she, if she's doing a right, a proper long pump. But if it's right? half, <laughs> if it's one long pump, 
if it's if it's six long if it's three long pumps that's one six, long pump and one, one no long pump. half pump. so if it's six right. if it's three regular pumps or six half pumps it's the same thing same amount right but is it six or okay. is it still three no oh, if God. there's if there's six pumps and she just does she says it halfway half pumps, then it's the same it's still yeah you, you described it wrong but you, your the spirit was right. the same same half of you're getting the same half amount that you want right right so what you're, did she end up doing i said just put two pumps in it that's what, that's what, that cut was, through was, the shit let's <laughs> just put two fucking pumps in it i, can't. I hope she fucking made those pumps so long for you like <laughs> No, it was all right. It was pretty. It was pretty good. Were you wearing a long pumps okay. only shirt? No, I wish I was though. Uh, see, I wish I was. But you have also, to go into one of those places with that shirt on. It came out ridiculously fast, which always makes me suspect. You should be waiting four minutes for a coffee at minimum at these places. No, you yeah. nuts. No, they the got guy, these things down to a science. It's in your cup in two seconds. The guy handed it to me thirty-five seconds later. I'm like, is this for me? He's like, yep. Yeah. So I can't drink iced, um, like the caramel macchiato, which is just espresso and milk and, you know, whatever, because Duncan makes them so milky. It's disgust. Like all you're tasting is milk whenever mm. I get those, like I the lattes the cappuccino. Hater. No, I, oh, no, I Starbucks just like. Starbucks is what you hate, right? Which no, one is no, the one said, you hate? Dunkin Donuts. Follow the story. What's wrong with you? Duncan. The one you hate is, is the one. The enemy is which one? Duncan. Well, she the had the pump the issue with Duncan. Yeah, yeah. It was Duncan. Right? I had the okay. pump and issue with that, right? So, yeah. Right. But uh, whenever they make a latte or cappuccino iced, it's just it's like you're drinking milk, and I'm like, so I have to tell them, can you just like put half the amount of milk? And they're like, oh, but then um, it's not going to be like big enough. Like it's not going to be like a, a large amount for the cup. So we'll just put extra ice in. I'm like, no, just, just put it in the cup, normal ice, half the milk. That's it. And I don't even want half the milk to tell you the truth. When I drink espresso, like iced espresso from, um, from Starbucks, I don't put any milk in it. I was going to say your go-to coffee was always like four shots of espresso over ice. Right. Exactly. So, like what about cafe latte? Go. Do you get a cafe latte? Because I got a cafe latte. I'll get you a cafe latte if you want a cafe latte. <laughs> yeah, they call that the crack addict special, by the way. They're like, oh, here's right. a crack addict just trying to get. Yo, you know what? Someone wrote <laughs> in the comments, and I laughed hysterically at it. Like, I think Janine is part zombie, part um, caffeine something or whatever. I was hysterical. I was like, well, that's probably true. Yeah, that's about What it. is this shirt? That's, that's a long, long pumps only shirt. Yeah, I need that shirt. Which is available now in the uh, shop, Anthony on Air.com store. Yeah. No, but I agree with you on the milk thing. There's we, We've gotten crazy in this country where we suddenly can't leave room in a cup anymore. Like, I'm okay. Yeah, I know. They feel the need. They have to fill it up with ice or with milk or with, well, it's like. to be fair, if you go to an establishment and they give you a cup and they hand you your, your what you bought and there's this much empty space in it, that feels like you're getting gypped, no? No. Nah. You well no. maybe you are, but if you if you go there and they give they don't fill your cup up. I you're understand what you're saying. I, I you're not wrong. I think that's why they're doing it. But I'm exactly saying that's we need the to, point. We need to change our behavior in this country. I I'll just give you a smaller cup. Yeah. All right. Some people like bigger cups. That's an option in Starbucks. You can order a bigger cup. That's true. I don't know just why you would do small, that, but that's, yeah. Maybe that's they add their own their own stuff in it. Some people like to do that. Irish it up a little bit. Yeah. Never know. Um, I also, um, Nick, uh, Janine, your brother is the biggest asshole I know. I mean, can we share this? <laughs> this what, was another what? part of my weekend. I went out. <laughs> I went out. I had a rare night out on Saturday night. We had like an, a kind of an adult night out. I went to a brewery. Uh, Wait, were your kids there? With my children. And you went with the other couple too. <gasps> wow! Didn't get an invite. Janine, did you get an look invite? At how, look at how sick, jealous you sick, are. Sick I'm not invite. Jealous. I'm just wondering where the invite was. I'm surprised at how much you really want to be my friend, Janine, because I really thought that we were coming to a close. 
<laughs> sick invite. <laughs> sick invite. Thanks. I did not. No, we didn't go with the other uh, with the new friends with the. So you went by yourselves, Janine and Frank, as I like to call them. Behind the, <laughs> the summer me. Uh, we went by ourselves. Yeah, I was saying uh, I, I had a weekend of like incredible fortune. Like everything went well for me. It was okay. It was unreal. Like we'd never like I had to go. My son had to go. He's starting. We used to call it CCD, but it's religious instruction now. Oh, God. Whatever it is, you know, because we're going to brainwash him and in, into the right. church. Um, so um, he had to go do that. And we had we also had a football game, a half hour difference. So he was going to be late for the football game. But because I'm one of the coaches, I had to go. Because of COVID, you can't take any extra people that don't need to be there. So my daughter had to come with me. So I was dreading like her bouncing like around, running around. She sat on the sideline for like a half hour. Just sat there. Like what four-year-old <laughs> do you know just kind of like behaves for a half hour straight? Wow. Not an issue. Not That's an really issue. Good. I got good. the I got the new iPhone. Here's something they don't tell you about kids. When you're getting the 5g iphone for the first time they don't come with sim cards anymore which means you can't make a phone call out of it so i bought it from apple which means i had to go to the verizon store to get the 5g yeah. sim card so i called the verizon store that my wife had gone to earlier in the week because she got her phone first and the guy goes i go i just want to check and make sure you have sim cards because i don't want to come all the way down there and uh you know find out you don't have any he goes yeah we have it's 40 dollars and I go, my wife, you just trade, you did my wife's for free. He goes, well, that was a mistake if she got it. He goes, the only place that does it for free is a Verizon store. I go, what the fuck are you? Mm -hmm. I go, it's just cold, you know. He's like, we're a Verizon authorized retailer. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. He goes, you're going to want the corporate store, which is in, and he tells me the town. So I look on the, my phone because of where the game was. I was actually closer to that store. Nice. I fucking went right over there. I get into the store. There's a guy reading me. I'm like, oh, how long is the wait? He's like, oh, should be like five minutes. I was in and out of there in 15 you're minutes. Never, you're never in and out of the rides in 15 minutes. Wow. 15 minutes. I even joked around with the guy. He was starting to transfer my phone over. I go, oh, I could, I could do that. He's like, oh, really? I go, yeah. I go, this is all Apple stuff from here on out. Like, the SIM card is the Verizon. I don't need you for the... He was like, oh, he's like, I was going to help you. But if you don't need it, he's like, I'll move on to the next. He's like, thank you. He's like, that's refreshing. He's like, most of the old people I got to do that for. He's like, but he goes, you Aww. younger people, you should be. And I was like, well, thank you for calling me younger. I appreciate that. That's nice. That's a good, that's a good weekend. Go to transfer. My, now I'm like, I got to transfer my phone over. There's a Best Buy next door. I'm like, oh, let me see if there's a case. Found the perfect case that it was like $24 Ooh. cheap. My wife orders food. I get a parking spot right in front of the place in the busiest part of town. What? It, I had one a mate. We get you to play the lottery. lottery. We uh, no, that was the, the only other person I told this story to was like, "Did you play the lottery?" I was like, "No." Yeah, and really. You missed out, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> we got to the brewery. The food truck was closed. Two minutes later, he opened up. He's like, "Oh, I, they sent reinforcements from the restaurant." I'm like, "Okay." You know who you are. <laughs> You're even Steven. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! These are all Seinfeld. Yeah, I'm right. They are. And I have to say this too: you guys are going to find this boring. But four people—I kid you not—four people came up to me over the weekend. A couple people at the brewery. We went to a fire safety thing at the local um, firehouse for the kids. They that give sounds out, fun. They give stuff to the kids. They, you know, it actually was cool. They lit some shit on fire and then they put it out. Okay. I don't know. I'm a child. I still think that that stuff is fun. I, I can see that they like they put like a mock room together. Wow, and they that is, that that is fun. Screen it that'll play for you. Ooh. It's like a raging fire. Anyway, cool. um, four people came up to me and they were like, "Oh, we miss you." On one of the radio stations I was on over here, they were like, "Oh, we really miss you on that station." I thought that was really nice of people to say. That is nice. Look at that. Yeah, that's beautiful. I, I don't remember any of their names, especially the, the young lady at the fire thing was super nice. She came over to me. She's like, I don't want a fangirl on you, but that station sucked since you left. I was like, that's really kind of you to say. Oh, that's nice. nice. And then now tell them about the show? No, 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 no. I don't. Oh, you dick. 
And then I, because I looked over and my son was gluing himself to a pumpkin. So I was like, I have to, I have to take care of this. Yeah, but priorities. Tell him about the show. But she was very kind. I would love it if people told me their name when they said these things, because then I feel awkward. Like, yeah, but that's weird. Imagine I come up to you and go, "Hi, hi, what's your uh, name?" I no, love you on weird. this show. My name is blah blah blah. It's, it's a, you have I to am, ask. What's your I name? am Steve. I, I I liked you. Yeah. Then I have to ask, and I feel like I'm pulling it out of them, like I'm pulling more compliments out of them. Oh, that's great. What's your name? You know, that's it. I mean, I do that sometimes, but then it's like. Then they feel then then I feel like sometimes they feel compelled to say more nice things. And it's like the original nice thing was was nice enough to say. Right. Get all the nice shit you can. Anyway, one person was like, I fear I said to, to one person at the brewery, I said, I, I'm doing a podcast now. And they go, yeah, I won't be on a show that support that you do with the serial killer. I was like, that's not it's he's not. Oh, the shit. Listen, those charges were dropped. Hmm. And then that another guy, person uh, was like, I would watch that show, but I don't like, uh, oh, no, no yeah, point good, now. Nice try. She good for Janine. She left before <laughs> she, she, <laughs> she saw it coming. She's like, out. See you later. She's getting, that was a pro move that she knew. She, she knew to get out of the doing. pocket and throw that ball downfield because. She, she knows what she's doing. Yeah, yeah. She's really, she's finding her way. She's catching on. <laughs> catching on to your bullshit. Anyway, that was my I, like everything was going for me this weekend. You ever have that? It was weird. I should have played the good one. That's a good weekend. Solid. Yeah. Like everything just fucking worked out. It was so and weird. Now he, today, it's fine. But you know those like claw games that never fucking pick up the thing. Mm -hmm. Took the kid to the movie after the fire thing. They had one of those. He's like, can, we, can you play that thing? First try, won a fucking prize. Nice. Yeah, it was weird the hell man it was one of those fucking weekends i don't know how you didn't play the lottery you're you're an idiot or at least pick up like a scratcher down to sunday morning we have this place that we love this bakery it's like kind of like on this little tiny farm kids love it they have like chickens it's like just beautiful places to like sit one of their like places to sit is like an old house and they call it the general store like it's like an old heater like just the most fucking adorable place you can picture like in a magazine Okay. I, I and I like getting the blueberry scone. Nice. So I go, I'll take a blueberry scone. She goes, We only have the sugar frosted blueberry scones left. I go, Thank you for making this choice easy for me. Because I would have felt compelled to not get the sugary shit on top of the scone, buttery, fatty shit. That's all you got. And she what are you gonna do. <laughs> that's how good this weekend was going for me. Man. Right? That's not bad. I don't know what the hell happened. Pretty good weekend. Pretty good. Cool weekend. That's pretty good. Cool How was your weekend? It was all right. All right. <laughs> 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 we'll leave it there. I took up all the time talking about my own uh, my it's own fine. shitty self. It's good. It's good it was weekend. good. Yeah, it good. Yeah. All right. Good. Well, it wasn't like your weekend when everything you know everything fell into place. I didn't do much, so it was fine. Yeah. So we didn't. We didn't. Really, we watched the movie. New movie, which is very good. I, talk, I talked about it once on the show. Uh, the Guilty with Jake Gyllenhaal, where he gets the 911 call. Okay. Very good. Somebody else told me it was really good, too. It's all him for the whole movie. It's one of those shot in one location kind of movies. Mm -hmm. And it's just him. He's a 911 dispatcher. And it's he's relaying calls. He's got to call the highway patrol. He's got to call this. Uh, and it's, it's amazing. It's really good. I, if he... If he's not nominated for this, I don't know what the hell. That good. I mean, it's an hour and a half of all him. And there's emotion and it's just not it's action. It's thrilling. It's that's hard it's to good. Do. It's really good. Did you like scale it up to me? Here's because when you said that, this is what I thought about mm. um, phone booth. I fucking loved phone booth. And I, I, I never saw it. I know what you're talking about. I know the movie, but I never really saw it. You never saw it? No, it's. You know, he's in like a big room with other people. Not, it's a 911 dispatch thing in, in California. And he works for the LAPD. And it's him. And he's taking calls, you know. And then he gets the one call that's like the movie, you know. And he has to follow along. He's, he's talking to this thing. He's coordinating with these people. He's doing this, doing that. He's figuring every stuff out. He's got to send people this way, you know. And then there's personal stuff that gets mixed in a little bit. 
and it's you know it's an hour and a half and it's it's all it's nonstop him they filmed it in 11 days I found out from trivia and it's just it's just all 90 minutes is just Jake Gyllenhaal and oh. you know a couple a couple of people come in and out but he's in every scene 11 oh. days is uh, that's not fucking it's not a lot of days to do it but they did even it. even 20 like the, the tightest I've ever heard on a film is like 20 25 days yeah this was because it's one location it's just him in in the thing you know he moves to another room at one point but it's in the, it's right across from where right. he's sitting right. but other than that and it's just him and phone calls you know what else is like that talk radio with eric bogosian you ever see that movie no fucking great movie there's a couple of flashback sequences in there hmm. but it was originally done as a play i saw it i didn't see the original play with eric bogosian but it was one of those like underground New York, like you had to fucking be in the know in the early get the tickets for that, yeah. Early nineties, maybe late eighties. So a little bit before my time that we were going into the city to hang. Mm. But they brought it back with Liev Shriver. And Liev Shriver did it. And it was fucking amazing. I can see this being a play. It's based on a yeah, it's based on a, a real life uh, story. But yeah, it was one of those like a Bronx tale. It's kind mm. of the same thing. It was that one man thing. They turned it into a movie. So that I mean, that's this sounds like this sounds like that kind of yeah. Movie. It's along same those thing. lines, but yeah. it's it's nonstop. You know, it just keeps going. And it's... Wasn't this the thing we were goofing about? They should call it Jake Jill and call nine one. Yes, <laughs> that was it. Yeah, and I actually we actually saw it. It's only ninety minutes, and it's really good. <laughs> uh, stupid, underrated, what a dumb right show. Under the radar. <laughs> what a dumb show we have. <laughs> Stupid thing. Jake Jill and call nine one one. Well, because what's the name of it? Actually, it's something it's called the guilty. The guilt. That's a dumb name. I it's a dumb name. Or stupidity. And I've seen the movie, and it's still a dumb name. It's like you know, <laughs> maybe you watch it and you go, "Oh, that that makes sense." Yeah. It kind of does, but it's still stupid. Yeah. Call it something different. If you want to get people to watch it, call it something different. Well, Bad name. All right, we'll leave it there. Leave it right there. This. Sopranos movie. I don't want to do it now, but we give people a little bit more time maybe to watch it. I feel like we talked about it. Yeah, we did. But judging by the numbers, nobody watched that episode. <laughs> Some people watch. We gotta No, we had great support from the, from yeah. our diehards, I feel like. Yeah, which I'm appreciative cool. of. It's fine. Love them. Love our diehards. Love them. All right, that's it. We gotta go. Uh appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to check out the store, shopanthonyonair.com. <laughs> Or uh, click the link in the uh, description below or the banner on the homepage of anthonyonair.com. Get some uh, Jumpstart Coffee Company for yourself. Don't forget to use that promo code. Get 15% off with AOA15. And uh, don't forget that every time you buy from Jumpstart, they are sending 50% of your purchase over to the um, Navy SEALs Foundation. So great coffee, great costs. Good stuff. Uh, thanks to those guys. To Jay Sabs, Frankie C, whole crew here. Appreciate you guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.